In this devotional, I'm going to share with you three thoughts from Ezekiel chapter 25, verses 1 through 7, where I'll ask the question, why did God judge Ammon? Ezekiel 25, verses 1 through 7 says, The word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, set your face towards the Ammonites and prophesy against them. Say to the Ammonites, Hear the word of the Lord God. Thus says the Lord God, because you said, Aha, over my sanctuary when it was profaned, and over the land of Israel when it was made desolate, and over the house of Judah when they went into exile, therefore, behold, I am handing you over to the people of the east for possession, and they shall set their encampments among you, and make their dwellings in your midst. They shall eat your fruit, and they shall drink your milk. I will make Rabbah a pasture for camels, and Ammon a fold for flocks. Then you will know that I am the Lord. For thus says the Lord God, because you have clapped your hands and stamped your feet and rejoiced with all the malice within your soul against the land of Israel, therefore, behold, I have stretched out my hand against you and will hand you over as plunder to the nations. And I will cut you off from the peoples and will make you perish out of the countries. I will destroy you. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Ammon is the land of the people of the Ammonites, and you might see them periodically throughout the scriptures. And these are a people that are utterly destroyed. They are completely crushed under the thumb of the Babylonian Empire. And the reason for this is God's judgment against them. All through Ezekiel 25, there are pronouncements of God against the various peoples that mocked Israel when they suffered the judgment of God. So here are three thoughts from Ezekiel 25, verses 1 through 7, answering the question, why did God judge Ammon? Thought number one, joy in judgment. This idea of saying, aha, when the nation of Israel is crushed, when the temple is destroyed, the Ammonites, they were laughing at it. They were taking joy in the fact that the nation of Judah was under God's judgment. They were finding joy in this experience of wrath that their neighbors were having. They laughed. They thought it was funny. They clapped their hands. They stamped their feet. They were having a celebration when God's people were judged by God. And it's this joy in the judgment of God where they're laughing and mocking what happens to the people of Israel that they are judged. Thought number two, malice towards Israel. They had malice, and this idea of malice is pretty simple. It means that they are enjoying the fact that somebody else is suffering. They are taking pleasure in the brutality that the Babylonians are placing upon the Israelites. They think that it's just the greatest thing in the world that these people who had been rivals are now under God's judgment. And it's this malice, it's this delight in their suffering that prompts the Lord to judge them for their wickedness. Thought number three, make himself known. Now, this is an idea that is repeated all throughout the prophets. When the Lord pronounces judgment and he uses one nation to crush another, it is always to make himself known. At the end of the passage that I read, it said, they would know that I am the Lord. The Lord is making sure that everyone, everyone who sees what happens to the Ammonites will know that the God of Israel is the one and true God. That there's no reason to mock Israel. There's no reason to take joy in their suffering because the Lord will ultimately restore them. But there is no such hope for the people of Ammon. They will fall just like Judah did to the Babylonians. And there is a difference, though. The Ammonites will never recover. They will be utterly crushed and broken down. And it's in this destruction that these people will finally recognize that their mockery of Israel, their mockery of Judah, their derision toward the people of God is the reason for their great suffering and for the judgment that they are experiencing. We should remember that. We should remember that and take care not to take joy in the suffering of the people of God, because ultimately the Lord will make 
every wrong right. These three thoughts come from the assigned reading of Ezekiel chapters 25 through 30. If you'd like to read through the Bible with me, you can do so by subscribing to this channel, by clicking on the link in the description, or by joining the Facebook group Through the Bible, where we are reading the text of Scripture together.